doing right now is kneeling some brass for a friend. This is 43 span, uh, 43 Mauser brass and unfortunately you have to do it with very dim light so you can really see the color. You don't really want to turn the brass bright red or bright orange that over kneels it. Uh, what he's trying to do, this is Bertram brass, it's kind of pricey and so he's just trying to prolong, trying to prolong the life of his brass because you're paying several dollars a case, which I think is what he pays. Uh, it pays to go ahead and keep your brass as long as you can. Anyway, he didn't have very many pieces, so I've just gone ahead and deprimed them and I'm annealing them. And then I'll go ahead and wet tumble them in some stainless steel pins and then we'll turn the light on and kind of show you what I'm doing because I've got to do some 45 volts as well yeah I'm going to be loading up some 45 Colt black powder thought I'd get some of that on film and the first thing I like to do is I like to kneel the brass I like to kneel the uh, the, the case mouth about down to here uh, this is my setup. Uh, at my feet is a bucket of water. And what I do is I take a socket um, from a socket set. This happens to be a, a 9 16 socket. And uh, I run a bolt down through it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure down the inside I had washers or bolts stacked up in it so that, you know, and this, this one's sized. For a 45 Colt, so I've got plenty of uh, case protruding. It's not a tight fit at all. Um, but if this spins in a drill, uh, the, the case will spin. And all I do is chuck it up into a drill. And I can sit here and turn it in a flame and then just upend it and just fall down into the bucket of water. Uh, I'll turn the light on here in a little bit. First thing I have to do is turn the light off and kind of get my timing down. If I remember correctly, this is about well, between five and seven seconds. The uh, case annealing experts, the guy, the bench rest shooters, they're real particular. They get these automatic case annealers and they're particularly worried about having a very consistent neck tension. Um, and they're very cautious about over annealing a case. Uh, so if you over anneal a case, you'll ruin it. Uh, I don't think it's possible to over anneal a case mouth on a 45 Colt, considering that the early brass for these early cartridges for these were just copper, and copper is much softer than brass anyway. Uh, I think you could get this just as soft as copper, and it wouldn't matter. Off. You know, I'd say, if I remember correctly, it's between five and seven seconds. Once I get the timing down, we'll turn the lights back on for the remainder of them. Yeah, it was about six. And it, to a professional annealer, like a bench rest shooter, that's probably more annealed than it has to be. And I just kind of look for a little orange tinge on the case mouth.
it was an old a lot of guys will talk about annealing brass and they say they stand their cases up and some water and then they just play a flame over them until they glow red hot and they dip them over in the water it's not really an even way to do it You'll notice with the lights on I'm just having to do a timed movement. The one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. And that'll be fine. But the light's on. You can't see the color change at all. With uh, the brass, cartridge brass particularly, it's tough a little bit with the lights. Then with cartridge brass, any brass for that matter, brass gets hard by being work hardened. The quenching operation, people think of quenching brass the same way they do of quenching steel, and, and they're not the same. When you heat steel and then you quench it, if there's any carbon in it, it's going to make it very hard, sometimes brittle. Brass, as long as you heat it to the critical temperature, it anneals, it softens. And the quenching operation has absolutely no effect other than to quickly cool it so that the heat that you've built up in the case mouth doesn't spread to the head. What you don't want with cartridge brass is a soft head. It actually has to be good and hard to keep the pressures in. It is, after all, a gasket, and you want the head to be nice and hard. And the head's not going to get work hardened anyway. I've never heard of somebody working brass until the head cracked from being work hardened. It's a case mouth you have to worry about. So I started annealing 45 Colt just as a way to prevent blow-by. And it does work makes it nice and soft and it expands kind of like how 4440 brass expands but the added benefit I get is I can reload this many 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 times without having to worry about overworking the case now well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these off camera so here's what you end up with when you're done um, you notice a little bit of a rainbow coloring here on the shoulder uh, that's about as far as I go um, I wanted to at least kiss the shoulder on these because I don't know if he's fired these yet uh, if he's got to do some sizing and it'll help to have the shoulder a little bit softer for him to do that um, I, I used to worry I used to want to clean the brass first and then do it because I thought you could see the, the heat line more but I found that tarnished brass works great I may not be able to see the actual heat color so much but it does change the appearance of the brass it, it you know the brass body was looked just like this the whole brass body when I started on this 45 Colt and uh, that changes to just a dull look here if it's tarnished and I and I heat treat it so that tells me you know, I can look at a bunch of brass and I can see that they're all consistent in terms of depth and that's what I'm looking for so I'm going to take these and I'm going to throw them in the uh, wet tumbler. When they come out, they'll be just shiny. You won't be able to see. All these heat colors will be polished off of it. I never under anneal. If anything, I may over anneal. If I get it a little soft, uh, just the slight work hardening that it's going to get from a, a resizing, I feel is probably beneficial. Um, but even with whatever little hardening you might get from one resizing, it's still soft enough that I completely eliminate any uh, blow by issues. I hope he's happy with his with his 43 Mauser brass. I used to do all my brass cleaning and uh, <clears throat> you know drying, tumble, tumble media, dry media, uh, walnut, crushed walnut, or sometimes the uh, corn cob media. Very very dusty. One of the things they say about reloaders is that. Uh, 
their exposure to lead is probably due mostly to their exposure to the uh, residue from lead stiffnate in the primers. And that mostly comes from, uh, from uh, you know, polishing in a, in a you know, dry tumbling the, the brass. Very, very dusty. Uh, this is stainless steel media. Uh, I got this some years back. Uh, Frankfurt Arsenal. Been very happy with this product. Anyway, it's filled with water. I like to take a little bit of Lemmy Shine. Uh, not much because I actually use it later on in the process as well. And just a little squirt of dish soap. Doesn't take a whole lot. You can put a lot more brass in here than what I've done. But I only have this much to clean right now. I pretty much stay ahead of my brass prep. And then it just has it just has this cradle. Some people claim you know half hour, an hour of tumbling is all you need. I actually I go a little long on mine. Uh, I don't care, but yeah, you just set it in the cradle, plug it in, turn it on. That's all. Anyway, it's got a little motor, you turn it on, it just sits there and rotates it like this and tumbles it around. Those little stainless steel pins getting all the little nooks and crannies. It's actually been longer than it needs to be. I just stuck this on the highest setting and just left it while I was doing some lubricizing of bullets. So it's actually been going for about three hours, probably longer than it needs to. The problem with these pins is they're very small, they tend to go just about everywhere, and they'll often stick to a surface. You won't notice it until you move something and you'll hear a pin hit the ground. I've probably lost 50 pins. They're not cheap, but they are infinitely reusable. Dirty that water is. Nice clean brass. Clean down to the primer pockets. I think he's going to be happy with these 43 Mausers. I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of brass to process this time, so. I'm just grabbing them, kind of shaking them in the water, making sure I get the pins out. <laughs> All right. All right, this is cleaned up. Right now we've got that dirty soapy water on. Yeah, do a step. Again, this is a pretty small batch. Now right now, they're very, very bright and shiny. I like to do another little process. It's called passivating them. Take a little bit of Lemmy Shine. For some reason, citric acid has a neat effect on brass. rinse agent people use for dishwashers and stuff it almost immediately changes to even a brighter shinier color and put that in there 
and that's pretty and everything. Most important thing it does is it passivates them. It, it like creates a special kind of oxidation on the surface which prevents lack of a better word, your normal brass tarnish. I take a food dehydrator tray. I should set these on a towel in the sun. I'm probably going to reload some of this 45 brass this evening, so I'll stick it in the food dehydrator tray. On the food dehydrator, it'll be dry and ready to go very soon. There again, shows you how clean a wet tumbler gets them down to the primer pockets. I mean, that looks like that looks like factory new brass. Inside and out. Very, very nice. 